y'all! Welcome back to another video on the Racing Joker channel. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. You see, most of my viewers probably know me for my Nissan Skyline GTR videos. So you might think my number one dream car is the Skyline. Well, actually, that's not the case. The car I covet the most is the 2001 BMW M3 GTR. You might recognize it from Need for Speed, or other video games, or perhaps even the American Le Mans series that it raced in. Much like the Skyline, this is one of my favorite cars of all time, so we're going to be talking about what makes it so cool. For starters, the M3 GTR was the first BMW M3 to be powered by a V8. The engine it had was a prototype called the P60B40. It was a 4-liter V8 built just for racing. In 2001, the car made about 440 horsepower, but in later years it made as much as 500. Keep in mind, the car also had a curb weight of 2,450 to 2,760 pounds, the result was a 0 to 60 of 3.4 seconds, a 0 to 100 of 7 seconds, and a quarter mile time of 11.4 at 127 miles an hour. The engine would later inspire what went into the E92 M3 as well as the M3 GT2. The engine in the road car was called the S65 B40. There wasn't a whole lot in common between the S65 and the P60 B40, beyond them both having 8 cylinders and a 4 liter displacement. But, if you have ever listened to an E92 M3, you probably notice the engine makes a very different note from the M3 GTR. And after asking Chris Fletcher, who has worked on the P60B40 before, he told me there are quite a few reasons for why the M3 GTR sounds different from the E92, but one of the main ones was the fact that the GTR's engine had a flat plane crankshaft. And here's the interesting part. The racing engine in the M3 GT2 also had a flat plane crankshaft. It was called the P65B40, and while it was still a racing version of the S65, it sounded a lot like the E46 GTR. Yes, it is possible to get an official BMW S65 flat plane crankshaft, but be prepared for ridiculously high prices. The M3 GTR's mythical V8 has never been for sale to the public, so the closest thing any of us ordinary people are going to get to having one is the S65. And here's a funny piece of information. The V8-powered M3 GTR was so successful in the American Le Mans series that it secured the 2001 GT title. However, before they started using V8s, the M3 GTR was powered by a racing version of the S54 inline 6. And at the time, BMWs were being outpaced by competitors such as Porsche. But as soon as they equipped the P60, the roles were reversed. As a result, Porsche complained that the M3 GTR was more of a prototype because the V8 engine wasn't available in road versions of the race cars. They said it was in violation of the spirit of Gran Turismo. It wasn't against any of the rules, mind you, just in violation of spirit. In 2001, the regulations were made to say that road-going versions of all participating race cars must be for sale in at least two continents. And thus, the Street M3 GTR was born, and only six were built. However, in 2002, the rules were changed to state that 100 road-going versions of the race cars must be built and 1,000 engines must be built in order for cars to qualify without penalties. In the end, BMW pulled out of the American Le Mans series, only to return once they had introduced the E92 M3. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whining to the people in charge isn't the most honorable way to win. In motorsport, the only whining you should ever hear are the sounds of straight-cut gears and superchargers. Looking at you, Porsche. Connected to the V8 was a straight-cut transmission. At first, they started out with using Hewlin six-speed gearboxes, but later used sequentials in some cars. There was another six-speed used in Chassis 006, but I'm not sure which manufacturer made it. 
I'm sure most of you were introduced to this car by Need for Speed Most Wanted and wanted to know where the mechanical whine sound came from. Well, that sound came from the straight cut gears and the racing transmissions they used. Nowadays, straight cut transmissions aren't that loud, but Hollinger gearboxes, for instance, do make the same noise. On the inside, not much is going on. Well, actually there is. But I meant more in the sense of the fact that there isn't really an interior. Which shouldn't surprise you since it's a race car. But on the inside, for handling, chassis reinforcement, and overall rigidity, the car has a welded roll cage system. The chassis reinforcement also allowed for the custom side exhaust to be made for the car. As you can see, the exhaust doesn't pipe under the car, but instead tunnels through the floor and exits out the right side skirt. The reinforcement from the roll cage allows this exhaust system to exist without compromising the structural integrity of the car. And plus, the car's ground clearance isn't messed up because the exhaust tunnels through the floor rather than sticking out from under the car. I'm sure many of you have seen pictures and videos of the car shooting flames out the side exhaust. Beyond the exhaust, the exterior of the car is even more distinctive thanks to the super-wide carbon fiber body kit, wing, and BBS wheels. The original GTR kit itself is exclusive to these cars only, and BMW does not intend to sell more. And even if they did, they would cost more than $20,000 for sure. The wheels are a similar story of unavailability as well. But I can tell you, they were BBS RE594s or RE595s. However, if you want to build an M3 GTR replica but don't want to use Flossman or DTM Fiberworks kits, you're actually still in luck. The GTR kit might not be available, but the E46 M3 GT2 kit is. It's fully made of carbon fiber, so don't expect it to be less than 20 grand just to buy, and it is an official PTG set, and looks almost just like the GTR kit. The main differences are mostly in the fenders, the GT2 fenders are more rounded than the GTRs, and it also has the option of splitters, canards, and diffusers, but it's more or less the same. And actually, these differences in design from the GTR improve the performance of the car anyways. Outside of Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 and Need for Speed Carbon, the original GTR body kit is a customization option for the E46 M3 in Need for Speed 2015 and Need for Speed Payback. However, the car uses the S54 inline 6 in these games and doesn't sound anything like the V8 GTR. Now, I'm afraid that's all I can really tell you. I admit, this was a very basic overview of the car, but a lot of what I know about this car isn't actually public information. So I can only tell you what I'm allowed to tell you. You know, NDAs and all that. But all the same, I hope you guys did learn something and enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think I should talk about next. If you enjoyed this video, then check out my Car Topics Explained playlist. I talk about importing Skylines into the US and how to build replicas of movie cars, for example. Beyond that, I do vlogs, driving POV videos, and gaming. And, since it's related, I thought I'd let you know I have a Need for Speed Most Wanted Let's Play as well, because the M3 GTR is in that game, and most of us were probably introduced to Dakar through that game. Anyways, that's all from me. Thank you guys for watching, and I, the Racing Joker, am now signing out. Stay crazy, everybody.